All right, welcome back. Welcome back to the Financially Fit Show, where I show you how to be financially free, be intelligent, and be thankful and grateful in life in general. Hopefully, everybody's doing well out there. Um, okay, that's great. I'm glad to see you, Axel. Welcome, uh, welcome, uh, welcome, buddy. One. Um, all right. T you know. So today we're we're gonna talk about. You know, I was thinking you're talking about like. Today I'm going to blow your mind, to be honest. <laughs> to be, to, you know, I think uh, our research team did a phenomenal job of really putting this together. Uh, so huge kudos to you guys uh, out there. Um, but today, today it's going to be a great session. Uh, it's probably going to be a very intense session. So um, you know, I'll I'll probably not stop a lot uh, in the middle to take any questions, and we'll probably take a lot of questions towards the end. I just want to go through the floor. Um, today I'm going to talk about like the biggest crypto risk out there the gbtc uh you know is is a ticking time bomb for for bitcoin and crypto which nobody's seen today um and if it explodes which will probably will it's going to have a catastrophic impact right so today we'll talk about uh, a few things on how that's probably going to explode and how did we come here and stuff like that so buckle up it's going to be a great session let's go okay uh you wanted this uh i had run a survey on twitter and uh, almost 87% of you voted uh, to have the session. So, you know, this is why I'm doing it. Uh, so thanks for your feedback. And if you haven't already, please hit a like and subscribe to the channel, but also follow us on Arc Intel because, you know, I run all these surveys time and again to just to see what in, what kind of content you, you guys would like to see. And like, you know, your, your feedback there, uh, you know, Tell, tells me what you want to see so you know we prioritize based on that and and also guys keep in mind i know there is a lot of requests that's ha that have come our way we are currently tracking a pipeline request of like 38 different topics um so and like i've said you know we we generally spend a lot of time researching and quality is paramount generally these sessions are a little longer as well right our live uh, live stream so we want to talk about things in detail so please allow us some time and we'll get to everything that you guys want so, you know, keep, keep, you know, everything that you've asked is being tracked. So keep, keep that in mind. Uh, we will get to all your topics, right? Uh, very soon. Okay. So just a disclaimer, the opinions expressed are for general information purposes only, and I'm not intending to provide you with any financial advice. This is just for your own, uh, you know, financial education. This is not financial advice. Consult a duly certified financial advisor and do your own research before investing. Nobody is paying us for any of this, right? We don't have any sponsors. So this is purely content that we researched, and this is just for your information and entertainment. Okay, let's get started. So GBTC, it's it's basically the biggest ticking time bomb. It's also like the biggest trust, Bitcoin trust, that the world has ever seen. Uh, today, the assets under management, as of yesterday, for, for Grayscale, Bitcoin trust was about $14.1 billion. Uh, That's, you know, if you look at the last 12 months of trailing, they are under 48.67%. So it's going under a huge discount. And I'll talk about all this and explain how this is calculated. Um no, nobody cares about since it was inception. You know, since it was incepted, right? It, it did have a lot of percentage points increase, but it's trailing, and, and I'll tell you why this is a ticking time bomb and why it will probably explode in the future. So today we'll talk about DCG, like the parent company which houses a lot of this. We'll talk about Grayscale, uh, which is the GBTC creator, Genesis, Gemini. We'll talk a little about how 3AC and the GBTC trade impacted and what got us here. Uh, then I'll talk about you know GBTC as how it is created and what are its benefits and stuff like that. We'll talk about the risks, basically, why this is going to be a risk. And, and also answer this question, like, will this ever be an ETF, right? A spot ETF. I think a lot of you want to, want to know this. I think a lot of you are banking on this. Um, but we have a very ulterior uh, view on this. So we'll, we'll talk about that and, and hopefully that will come in the end. So let's go. Okay, so DCG, right? This is basically the, the the digital currency group. This is the parent company. So digital currency group is holding company that owns a number of different companies in the crypto space, right? So think of it like a parent company, and then it has multiple other companies that it has ownership in. Um, DCG was founded by Barry Silbert. Uh, you know, he's an ex-banker, and he's he, he's he was. I mean, at least until not too long ago, considered as to be one of the biggest OGs in crypto. Um, and a pretty respected guy again until you know until the whole Genesis thing came about. Um, but you know this was a big company and it has like multiple other companies. It's not just one thing put together, right? So they own many subsidiaries. The most known are the CoinDesk one, 
Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, like CoinDesk is, is is a news platform. It's a it's a really really good news coverage, and we we do a lot of you know to read almost every article that that's posted there. So they, they do a really good job, I think. Uh, then there is this Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, the Genesis Trading, and the Foundry Mining Pool, and many others. But these are the most prominent ones that are included in this parent company, right? So when we when somebody says you know GBTC, think about DCG because DCG is basically the parent company holding all the other smaller companies. So they own they own all these subsidiaries. Okay, quickly let's move on to Grayscale. Um, um, just like a very quick high level view of what Grayscale is and what it does. So Grayscale is a digital currency asset management company, right? Uh, and it was founded in 2013, so way back. Uh, not you know it's almost almost a decade ago. Um, and was the first to launch any Bitcoin trust. So GBTC, they were the first product in the market to have launched a Bitcoin trust, which is which is very popularly known as GBTC. Um, and this is this was basically created, uh, keeping in mind all the institutionals, like big institution, uh, who would like to get exposure to Bitcoin, but not necessarily want to go through the hassle of you know buying the original asset and keeping it and storing it and stuff like that right they wanted to go after the institutions who just wanted exposure to to bitcoin um and also the high net in the in you know individuals so basically this was targeting the rich and the super rich and that was the aim right that you know because they because you know it's it, it takes certain amount of skill to to buy an asset and store it in a cold storage and keep it you know secure and stuff like that and a lot of people would just like to buy an ETF and there was no ETF there still isn't there is still there is still no spot ETF for Bitcoin so Grayscale uh, came up with like this private platform to buy this on um, and for a long time for a very long time until very recently Grayscale Bitcoin Trust was the only way institutions could get Bitcoin exposure through regulated wrapper, right? So this was the only way, uh, an only derivative uh, uh, kind of market for, for Bitcoin exposure. You know, I mean, I mean, and now there are a few companies who are doing this, but for a very long time, Grayscale, and even today, I think it's probably one of the biggest, right, uh, you know, Bitcoin trusts out there that people want to get exposure to, institutions want to get exposure to. I must also say, they all they have over 600,000 Bitcoin today on in their trust. So, they own almost like you know about three percent, three to four percent, right? If you if you look at all the Bitcoin that was lost and out of the twenty one million and a couple of million were lost and stuff like that, they would probably own about three to four percent of the overall Bitcoin that ever is going to be in the world, right? So it's a pretty pretty massive Bitcoin trust, uh, only after Satoshi's wallet, which has a million Bitcoin. Um, so this they they were really crucial in my opinion. Uh, in bringing the price of Bitcoin right to tens of thousands of dollars, right? Because as this trust expanded, especially around 2020, 2021, and you know a lot of people started buying, and then they have to buy a lot of Bitcoin uh, as a collateral, or not a collateral, but as a, as an asset to back it off with. They were buying real Bitcoin into the trust. Um, they they use Coinbase. Uh, for their custody, uh, for for the traditional custody storage facility, you know, uh, facility, um, but they were prime players because of which a lot of the Bitcoin was removed from the market, which helped in increasing the price of Bitcoin. So six hundred thousand plus Bitcoin is a lot, right? So so I think they definitely were, uh, you know, were behind it. And it's not a bad thing. Just saying, like you know, they are a big big player, and anything happening here, and if this Bitcoin ever gets liquidated in the future would have a catastrophic impact on the overall price of Bitcoin. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So that's just a quick overview of Grayscale, right? I'm just going to introduce all these different players and we'll spend the most time on the 3AC GBTC trade where all these players will make their entrance. Uh, but just so that you guys are aware, this is how it's structured so far. So let's go to, let's talk about Genesis, right? And we'll spend some time on Genesis because it's they've been under some scrutiny and they've been in the news re recently. So... Genesis was the first, uh, was one of the first, right? Like very early, and one of the largest prime brokerage, uh, you know, brokers or you know companies that are offering brokerage services for crypto. Uh, its primary business lines included like over-the-counter trading, custody of assets, lending and borrowing, very typical. But over-the-counter trading for like you know big big buyers who would want to buy 
you know, Bitcoin, but wouldn't like to impact the price, right? So this is where the over the counter trading is actually important because then if you just buy directly from the exchanges uh, on spot trading services, then as you're buying more, the Bitcoin price will get impacted, right? So even for you as a strong buyer or a rich buyer, it's not advantageous because you'll end up paying more right, and get less Bitcoin at the end. So generally all these big billions of dollars of trades actually happen over the counter. Unlike the last trade that happened, and I made a video about that last week, if you haven't, just check that out, which, which is why I believe the Bitcoin price is now inflated right now. It's not going to stick, um, right? Because it wasn't bought over the counter. It was bought directly to influence the Bitcoin price, right? So again, not, not digressing, but saying like, you know, generally big pur purchases always happen over the counter. Okay. And... You know, from their lending and borrowing services, Genesis had a number of institutional clients, right? With trading and lending relationships. With one of the most well-known of these, all right, roll the drums. Here comes the Three Arrows Capital. We can't really talk about crypto calamity without talking about Three Arrows Capital, right? They are the catalyst, looks like, in everything that's wrong with crypto. But anyways, that's besides the point. Um, but yeah, so they had a really strong... Uh, trading and lending relationship with Three Arrows Capital, and, and this collapsed like last year in June, uh, as you know. So Three Arrows Capital was one of their prime uh, lender, lender, um, right? And Genesis did a lot of business with them before before they collapsed, and they've been underwater ever since. FTX was just the icing on the cake. It was just the event that made them bankrupt. But even before that, Genesis was always in trouble after June last year when Three Arrows Capital went under. And we'll talk about that in a bit. Let's talk about Gemini. Okay, Gemini is an exchange, right? It's just like Coinbase. It's, it's an exchange founded by the Winklevoss twins um, who came to be embroiled in this whole saga. And, you know, G you know, Winklevoss, Winklevosses, these are the folks who actually owned almost 1% of Bitcoin of everything that was released out. So they bought a lot of Bitcoin. It is told or it is said that um, from the settlement that they got from Facebook, they reinvested that funds and bought a lot of Bitcoin very, very early, uh, right around 2011 uh, or so. Um, and ever since then, they've been in the crypto crypto industry, right? And they're trying to, you know, uh, you know, work through different different products, right? So Gemini was an exchange that they founded, um, and inadvertently they got embroiled in this whole saga and I'll, and I'll talk about how that was right so gemini ran a lending program right it, it earns it you know with its users where they could loan out their crypto and generate passive income on the exchange right just a very typical you know very typical of any exchange right when you look at any exchange there's always a lending program attached people get greedy they want to give away their crypto they want to make an yield right um and gemini again ran a lending program called as gemini earn um, now, the difference between other platforms like, you know, um, or other exchanges, say, for example, uh, Binance or Gemini was Gemini partnered, right? They didn't do it themselves. They partnered with Genesis to do it. So basically what they did is like they said, hey, Genesis, you seem to have all this figured out. So what we will do is we'll just enter an agreement with you. We will act as an agent who is bringing a customer to you and we'll take, you know, um, you know, we'll take some sort of a percentage, right? Uh, uh, because we are bringing you a customer and you create a product and then we will let, you know, people use your services on like you know, for lending program and our customers will be able to lend using your services and we'll just take a commission because we are bringing you the customer. So basically that's what happened. This was signed back in 2020 when all these you know, DeFi protocols were just coming in. Ethereum was just going up, and you know, DeFi was like like the big thing of the town, and uh, and it was launched early 2021, right? And Gemini was just acting as an agent and and getting a commission through it. Uh, so that's how they uh, un <laughs> unplanned, or maybe maybe planned, but inadvertently got involved with with Genesis. And boy, that was such a bad such a bad decision because you know. Now they are in trouble, right, with, with all the lawsuits and stuff like that. But we'll, we'll get there. We'll talk about that in a bit. So that's what happened with Gemini. Um, you know, what what I think they probably didn't plan for, or maybe they did, but Gemini Earn grew considerably since its launch number, right? Uh, and about 340,000 earned customers with about close to a billion dollars have been locked up. Um, you know, so that, you know, it really grew, and Gemini was considered to be one of the safer uh, you know, exchanges out there, right? Um, it was, you know, within the US and like people, you know, trusted them. Um, and now with them being partnered with Genesis, you know, people thought this, oh, this is a great option. We can just give our, 
you know, all this crypto and start to make an eel and, and uh, little did they notice that this was, there was a partnership between them and, and all that, right? So, so that's what happened. Um, in November 2022, Gemini Earn users learned, like this was right after FTX. So like I said, right? So in June of last year, in 2021, that's when the 3AC, you know, calamity happened. But then Genesis was slowly crumbling down, but still barely surviving. However, when FTX collapsed, that was basically the, you know, the last nail in the coffin uh, for, for Genesis. And Gemini earned users who are now were investing stuff with Genesis, right? I mean, because they were, you know, getting earned or they were earning yield through, through the Genesis platform. Um, suddenly realized that they would not be able to withdraw any assets, right? Because of the FTX collapse. And you saw all these headlines and, you know, there was a blog post uh, done by, uh, you know, by by the Gemini team on, uh, you know, on Genesis Earn. And, and after that, you know, the, the Winklevoss twins, they've been trying to understand how Genesis is going to take this forward. When are they going to release the assets? Because the assets have been frozen. These are basically Gemini customers who are not really bad at Gemini because the Gemini was basically the, the person in the middle trying to get the two together, right? So, so and they've been trying to work with Barry for a while, uh, trying to understand what's the plan and how this is going to be, you know, when the, when the withdrawals are going to be taken up again and stuff like that. So that continued to happen. Uh, however, given that there was really no response from Barry, right? So Barry was completely off Twitter for months, as you know. I don't know if, if you follow him, but he was completely silent. On what's happening with you know Genesis that also freaked the market because remember Genesis is basically a name it's a subsidiary the re real company is DCG and DCG also owns Grayscale GBTC which is again a ticking bomb so it's like okay people are starting to suspect like hey what's going on is there a problem with the DCG are they bankrupt fully they're not really giving any response this resulted in a very public spat recently um, you know um, where there was like this open letter uh, written by uh, Cameron Winklewasser on, like, you know, uh, uh, Barry, like, you know, not, Barry really need to step up and not really sharing information and acting shadily. And, you know, they've been, Gemini have been trying very patiently to trying to work this out. And there is a billion dollars worth of crypto assets for their customers that are, that are stuck there. So there was like this open letter, which made, which made news. Um, and, you know, <laughs> Barry did respond to this shamelessly. I think he said something, but then completely vanished. But yeah, again, we'll not digress. We'll keep our focus on GBTC. Uh, but this is how, you know, it all unfolded, which gave the market a little more insight into what the heck is going on within DCG. Because if you if you really look at it, 900 million plus or close to a billion dollars of what, like the missing funds that they had, shouldn't be that much not that big of a hole to fill for a company like dcg right if you look at it they have grayscale Genesis, they have coinless they have all these other revenue making right like grayscale or gbtc is the biggest cash cow that they have and i'll talk about that in the gbtc section so you know bear with me um but they they make a lot of revenue hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue just by running gbtc even after the fact that gbtc is still like 50% underwater, right? Even then, they still make a lot of money. So this is where what, you know, I think people were left wondering, including us, right, at, at Arkansas, it was like, hey, it's a billion dollars of hole. Agreed that it's a lot, but not a lot for like a company like DCG. Why aren't they able to fill this out, right? And why aren't they able to get any loan against it? And why is nobody paying them any money or loaning them any money, given that they have GBTC? For God's sake, they have the second largest you know, or basically the largest, you know, Bitcoin, uh, you know, Bitcoin treasury or Bitcoin um, fund out there. And then there is, you know, um, and only after Satoshi, right? So it's like, th that was really, everybody was scratching their head as what's going on. Um, and, you know, and we'll, you know, hold that thought, right? We'll talk about Genesis and the lending. But I think before we do that, it's important to talk about like the 3AC GBDC trade because this shows as to what exactly was going down and why Genesis wasn't able to fill that billion dollar hole and eventually had to declare bankruptcy, okay? It all starts way back in 2021, right? When the 3AC GBDC trade started, right? So so this is where, let me let me complete the 3AC GBDC trade and we'll go into detail. It's literally like a movie, right? It's like a film story. There's these layers and layers, right? And as we were researching this for like over two weeks, 
boy, we were surprised to learn a lot of the stuff that's going on here. So here's what's going on, right? Here's what happened, right? We'll talk about this and then I'll probably take a pause and answer any questions you have before we go to GBTC. But I think this is really interesting, guys, right? So you're in for a treat. So this is what was going on. So, so far we've established, okay? So let me recap, right? DCG is the parent company. Grayscale Genesis are the two subsidiaries along with others, right? That this parent company actually owns. Gemini started an earn program, right? And they partnered with Genesis, which is basically the lending arm of DCG, as you can say. Um, and then they were just taking a commission, bringing customers to Genesis and then, you know, and, and starting that. This all went fine for a while until 3AC went down in June and people started to see all these cracks come up. And then eventually, I think, uh, you know, around November when FTX went down, this was basically the, the, the death of coffin nail. And that's when, you know, uh, Genesis froze all the assets from, you know, from, 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 for withdrawals, Gemini customers got screwed. They were like, hey, about a billion dollars, close to a billion dollars of assets that are, that are, that have been locked up, that have been unfrozen. Gemini started asking all these questions that never got any response. Barry stopped responding on Twitter, right? And, uh, you know, th and this resulted in like, you know, uh, them writing an open letter and trying to seek a response and stuff like that. Okay. So that's where we are in right so far in the story. Now, Let's take a step back, okay? This is what's this is what recently happened, but we'll take a step back, right? As they go in the movies and take a step back to see where did this where did this started? Like, what was the cause of why Genesis, which is you know under DCG, in spite of making hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue from different sources, um, in spite of having like the largest Bitcoin trust in the planet, was still not able to find a billion dollars or cover a billion dollars of hole in Genesis and stop it from or prevent it from going bankrupt. Okay, so that's the question. And I think you will find the answers like we did in the 3AC GBTC trade. So this is what's this is what happened, right? So let's let's get in. So three arrows capital, roll the drums. They are the they are, they are basically the ca catalyst on, on this whole thing where big borrowers from Genesis. Okay, so like like we said, like Genesis is a, is a platform and they were closely partnering with Three Arrows Capital. There were about $2.3 billion worth of loans made to Three Arrows Capital and all these loans were under collateralized. Can you believe it? Like, and I just don't know why that happened, right? Three AC isn't related to DCG beyond the business agreement for what we know. Anytime when you actually to take a loan, you have to put a proper collateral in place. And if you look at it, right, especially for riskier markets like crypto, the collateral is generally 4x the size of the investment, right? So for example, if you go to a bank and if you want to get a loan, you can't, right? Like, I mean, but let's say you go to like any other platform and you want to take a loan on crypto, right? If you were to take the loan on crypto, you'll have to put 4x of the amount, at least 4x, if not more, right? 4x of the amount that you're trying to borrow as collateral, right? So for example, if you're trying to borrow Bitcoin and let's say Bitcoin is $20,000 and if you're trying to, you know, uh, you know, borrow like a $10,000 against the Bitcoin, you'll probably have to put at least two Bitcoin as collaterals. So that's like $40,000 worth of, uh, you know, collateral. And if the value of Bitcoin were to go down, then your collateral value goes down. So you'll have to put more collateral to keep the loan afloat. If not, you get liquidated. They will sell the Bitcoin and they'll give you back whatever you, you know, whatever you got after they take their chunk of money, right? That's how traditional capital, like financial markets work, especially around crypto. However, in this case, Three Arrows Capital were the biggest borrowers. They borrowed $2.3 billion of money from Three Arrows Capital and all these loans were under collateralized. And that is surprising. That's what we found. Now, Three Arrows Capital blew up, right? And the founders really ghosted their lenders, right? This happened in June. And the founders really just ghosted the lenders, right? They stopped responding to tweets and nobody knew where they were. And after a few months, you know, I saw a tweet from them that they are launching like this, li you know, a, a lifestyle, you know, pod. Uh, and they were raising money for that, right? I mean, and this is really, I'm not kidding here. This actually happened. Um, boy, like it's just surprising. But Three Hours Capital just blew up, right? And they declared bankruptcy and, you know, and, and then they just completely vanished from the surface of the earth. So this happened, right? This happened in June of 2021. And Three Hours Capital had made big bets on the Grayscale GBTC premium. So it was a really 
it, you know, it was a very, very shady trade that they had ongoing. And we did a lot of research and we, we uncovered a lot of this, right? So we'll, I'll tell you how that trade actually worked, which helped this whole 3AC, 3AC GBTC trade happen. But we suspect 3AC, 3AC, 3 Arrows Capital, probably engaged with Genesis in a recursive lending scheme that will help inflate the value of GBTC, increase the fees of Grayscale, and increase the profits for 3AC, right? So this was a lending scheme, which was recursive, and they were just floating the money around and increasing all the values of all the assets that were, they were touching. Now, I know you guys are a little confused on this, so let me break down the trade for you. Now, this is allegedly, it's not been proven. This is something that we suspect. I think a lot of other uh, people are also started to look at this. I think at some point in the near future, hopefully we'll know what happened with 3 Arrows Capital. But here's how the trade possibly happened, right? So the first step of the trade is, Three Arrows Capital would post a small nominal collateral because everything was under collateralized, right? And I don't know why that was the case, but Genesis and then they have like some sort of a, I don't know, some sort of a uh, agreement or, or understanding. So 3AC would just post some sort of a collateral to Genesis in order to buy Bitcoin, okay? So they would post that collateral and then they'll get the money, they'll get the funds and then they'll just buy Bitcoin with that. Step two, this Bitcoin was then sent back to Genesis, right? To issue GBTC shares at grayscale. So then they would take it back, right? They will give it back to Genesis and they'll say, okay, instead of Bitcoin that we bought, uh, right, we want to get the shares at GBTC. Now, what would happen is because GBTC will have to buy Bitcoin, right, and give them the shares of Bitcoin, they would take the Bitcoin that they have, uh, the value of grayscale GBTC, again, allegedly, that's what we're saying, will go up from this trade, right? So this is what happened. So once this GBTC shares were issued, they were traded at a premium, at the net value in the asset value of bitcoin that was locked up right so because there is more and more bitcoin going into gbtc gbtc would trade up in a premium so now customers are paying more for getting a gbtc share because more and more bitcoin is getting stored within the gbtc uh you know lockup um so now the shares are at a premium right so they got the shares but then immediately once they get it the shares are at a premium so not only are they getting bitcoin not only the Bitcoin value is going up in this trade because more and more Bitcoin is going off exchanges. Uh, a lot of this Bitcoin is going into GBTC, which results in GBTC shares now being inflated, uh, right? And, and the trade being at a premium, right? And this probably caused the GBTC shares to continue to go up, right? Initially, if you look at like 2021 and, you know, in and, and, and 2020, right? Like the GBTC shares really moved up uh, over the last two years. And I think this kind of trade helped move the value up uh, for GBTC shares. Um, 3AC, again, would then use the GBTC shares as collateral, right? So now the GBTC shares are up in value, remember, right? So because they bought, they borrowed more Bitcoin, they bought more Bitcoin from that. So the GBTC trust now has more Bitcoin. So overall, you know, the shares are up in value because there's more Bitcoin added to them. And because of this, the GBTC shares are more valuable than the one they received. So then they would post this collateral back to Genesis this would enable, you know, the three hours capital to borrow even more money because now the collateral is more, right? And then the play goes on and on and on. Do you see it? Boy, this is such, you know, this took us a long time, right? And like I said, I told you I'll blow up your mind. I hope you're as blown as we were when we when we uncovered all this, right? So let me quickly review what we said, right? So three hours capital will post any collateral. Um, and get, you know, in, in Genesis and would, would buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin would then be sent to Genesis, right, to issue more GBTC shares, right? Once the GBTC shares were issued, they were traded at a premium because more and more Bitcoin got, got added there. The premium went up. They would take that premium, uh, right, and then buy more Bitcoin and then do the circle again. So this is where this chart now kind of makes sense to you guys. Like a lot of this floated this chart, uh, you know, around, but this is exactly what, what was going on, right? So Three Arrows Capital would take a loan uh, with Genesis, under collateralize, they'll take that loan and then they will buy Bitcoin. They'll give that Bitcoin over to Genesis to convert it to the, the GBTC shares. The GBTC shares goes up in value. They will take the GBTC shares and then they will give it back to Genesis again as a higher collateral, and then they'll buy more Bitcoin from it and more GBTC shares, and hence the value of Bitcoin, the value of GBTC, the value of three, you know, three hours capital. Everything started to go up and up and up. This is basically the recursive, uh, you know, lending mechanism, and you know, like like I told about. So that's what we suspect happened, and because of this, 
you know, the value of GBTC really went higher and higher, right? It was coming at a premium and 2020, 2021 was basically a really good year for them, right? Because, you know, the value of GBTC went continuing up and up and up while Genesis, you know, uh, became like the central agent trying to lend and then take the money and put it into grayscale. Uh, they would put it into you know GBDC trust and everybody became rich overall, right? So this was a recursive cycle uh, that happened. Now, if this was being done, now again, this is allegedly, and right? we don't know for sure, right? And, and hopefully there's going to be some sort of investigation. Uh, and But if this was done, like, like we said, this is basically illegal, right? There's a fraudulent term called as daisy chain, uh, where, you know, you have, uh, where, you know, inflating the value of your collateral or your asset like this is, is, is illegal. You can't do that because your value of the asset has to go from the market, not necessarily managed to go up. And this is exactly what they were doing, inflating the value of GBTC for the benefit of DCG. Um, you know, and ironically, Barry Silbert had talked about this as one of his tweets like way back in June, right? So we actually looked at this Twitter and we found like this tweet where he's like, you know, there is a daily chain of borrowers and lenders in the crypto space, most well capitalized, but some are not. Lots of leverage still in the ecosystem, including some non-obvious places. Important to understand counterparty risk and where are the weak links in the chain, right? So he was giving all this knowledge to the world. Uh, so the question is, was that going on within DCG, within GBTC and within Genesis, right? I think nobody can say for sure. We don't know, but... It seems that's what the trade was. That's how the trade happened, right? And this is how GBTC was inflated and it really benefited initially, which actually impacted the overall Bitcoin price, guys. Let me put it that way. A lot of Bitcoin got stored and saved and tucked into the GBTC uh, you know, trust, which removed a lot of Bitcoin, which increased the price of Bitcoin as well. So it was one of the biggest drivers of the Bitcoin price too. So just keep that in mind. Um, now, the thing is, everything works well until it works well, right? Like this trade worked really fine until GBTC was trading at a premium, right? GBTC was trading at a, pre trading at a premium. Now, when the Bitcoin price started to go down because a lot of these bad players came to surface, especially the three arrows capital, then the FTX and stuff like that, all the cracks started showing in, right? So the GBTC trade, like you see here, was you know, positive um, until like, you know, G February, Jan February 2021 or stuff like that. And then it started going into discount. So this basically what this means is there is more Bitcoin in the trust than the value of the stock or, or the share at the time, right? So that's what it means when it's like trading at a negative premium. So, you know, so the GBT is traded at a discount to the net value assets of Bitcoin. This created a number of problems for both Genesis and Three Arrows Capital, because keep in mind, the biggest thing that they were doing in this recursive scheme is they would buy GBTC share, right? Which would go on a premium because of more Bitcoin coming in. And they would take that and again, put that as collateral and get a higher value. Now, what was happening because of all the other bad players, like probably like them, uh, who went under, the Bitcoin value and the price went down, people started dumping GPTC. So the GPTC value, in, in spite of them doing like buying and putting more Bitcoin in it, wasn't going up at a premium. So their collateral that they were buying, right, and wanted to put in, started getting lower and lower and lower to the point where the collateral was much, much lower than the amount of money that they were borrowing. Uh, that was the problem why Genesis went underwater. That was the problem why they had, you know, a billion dollars, they said, of a hole to cover up, right? That's what happened. So, you know, it works fine until it works fine. And then eventually it all goes down. That's what happened, right? So because now if you look at it, the value of the collateral that has been posted to run this trade is trading below the value of the loan themselves, right? So it's basically, you know, I, you 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 want to get like uh, two Bitcoin, you know, you, you want to get like, Fifty thousand dollars, and then you're you're saying that hey, I'm going to post one Bitcoin as collateral. We all know Bitcoin is like what twenty two thousand dollars, and the value of the loan is like fifty thousand dollars. It makes no sense. So the collateral is not enough to repay the lender for the money they lended, which actually means that they now have a hole to cover, right? And that hole, according to them or according to the market, was a billion dollars of hole that Genesis had because of this trade, right? So this is exactly what happened. Um, now that, you know, so 3SE couldn't survive, so they went under and then they ghosted everybody and then completely 
uh, you know, vanished from the face of the earth until they came back later, saying that they, they are, they're creating like a podcast, right? Like lifestyle podcast later on. They disappeared and left the lenders like Genesis, uh, you know, uh, like biggest, they, Genesis was the biggest lender. They just left them um, with holes on their balance sheet, right? And the whole, at the, at the time, people thought the hold is about a billion dollars. Now, that was also a wrong, right? Well, I'll talk about that, in, but that's what actually happened, right? Now, after the collateral was liquidated, Genesis was still left with a shortfall of about 1.2 billion, right? That's that's what people had suspected, right? That's what Genesis had said. They are trying to fill the gap of 1.2 billion because because of these loans were under collateralized and the value of GBTC went down. Uh, the value of their collateral was much lower now, and because of the difference, even if they would have, you know, uh, even after liquidation, they still had like 1.2 billion dollars of collateral or the hole in collateral value that they were trying to fill in. Um, now this this is again right like this is this is a new this is a new drama that happened I don't know how many of you followed this, but DCG then issued a 1.1 billion dollars of promissory note to Genesis right so the DCG the parent company so Daddy came to rescue and said okay you know what there are a lot of rumors going around in the you know outside that DCG is bankrupt and stuff like that so let Daddy prove a point for everybody and Daddy said you know what son I'll give you 1.1 billion dollars of promissory note. Um, and I will give you <laughs> on the terms that nobody has ever heard of, right? So they gave them uh, this loan for a 10-year term with an interest rate of 1%, right? It's like, you're my son. I love you. Uh, you know what? I don't want the money back, but I, I really want to teach you a lesson. So what I'm going to do, son, is I'm going to give you $1.1 billion, and I'm going to give you an interest rate of like 1%, like, and I'm going to give you this for 10 years. Um, wow. Can you believe that? Like, you know, this was... When, when I read this, uh, you know, a few months ago, I was like, what's going on with DCG? Of course, we hadn't done in-depth research like we did now, but it was like, why did they do that? Because if you look at it, there is no way that a 10-year unsecured promise note will come with an interest rate that's less than the cost of borrowing of a of U.S. government bond. So the U.S. government bond, which is supposed to be the safest bond, will charge you at least 3.3% interest rate, right? As of now, 3.4%, right? Um so, you know, why would anybody giving a loan to anybody would charge less than this? That doesn't just didn't make any sense. But yeah, you could argue like, hey, you know what? DCG is a daddy trying to save their son and they just wanted them to teach a lesson. And they, they said, I will just charge you one person less than the market. But anyway, so this happened. This bad loan actually happened. But what do we see, right? What happened after that? Genesis, Genesis still filed for bankruptcy. Wow. In spite of getting $1.1 billion of a promissory note, which was supposed to cover 100% or almost 100%, right? Because they said that, hey, our hole is $1.2 billion. So they, daddy gave $1.1 billion. So right, that probably would have covered 95, 97% of their hole. Why do they have to go to bankruptcy, right? So they declared bankruptcy, right? Um, and uh, this was filed not too long ago, right? This probably this happened like last week. Um, you know, uh, and uh, they filed it, um, uh, and they filed it in New York, uh, and they said like, hey, we are bankrupt, uh, especially our lending zone. Not they didn't file it for entirely, but their lending arm, um, uh, lending businesses, they filed for bankruptcy protection. The first day of hearing showed us that Genesis claimed five point one billion dollars in liabilities. This is the amount of money that they now owe to their creditors. Five point one billion dollars. Not $1.2 billion, as they were said. And this is precisely why, you know, the $1.1 billion of promissory note from daddy, DCG, did not help because their hole is much bigger. They claim $5.1 billion as their liabilities for the top 50 creditors that they owe. In the very first day of bankruptcy, this was re revealed. So this is exactly why they had no option but to go to the bankruptcy court because the $1.1 billion what was told or what was given by DCG uh, just couldn't cover the hole. Now, the, the thing is there are two things to look at it, guys, right? The first one is the hole was much bigger than what they were claiming, clearly. Everybody said it's 1.2 billion. That's the hole they're looking for. And I, for the love of God, just couldn't understand why they are not able to raise that capital, given that they have something like GBTC that they own, like DCG, I'm saying. Why wouldn't they not be able to, you know, raise a billion dollars of capital with 600,000, you know, 600,000 Bitcoin, uh, you know, on their balance sheet? Because the hole is much bigger. That's the reality. The hole was 5.1 billion. So 1.1 wouldn't make any, wouldn't make any difference. 
and they went for bankruptcy. So that's the first thing that it shows. The second thing that it shows is like daddy did not have enough money to bail them out. So daddy, which is DCG, did not have five to six billion dollars on their balance sheet to bail them out, which tells me the situation that we have with DCG. Like it tells me what is their financial situation like that. Now, I'm not saying five billion is a easy money to get and I'm not saying it's you know, 5 billion would be lying around for them to just give it to their son. Like, I'm not saying that, right? But what I'm saying is, you know, with having so much Bitcoin and stuff like that, uh, they just tried and they tried really hard for the last two months, right? Uh, they just couldn't cover the hole. And the best thing they said was like, okay, we need to go bankrupt, right? Uh, that's the only way to, to, to move out of this. There is really no way for us to take this back because this hole is too big to fill because it's 5 billion and we lied to the market that it's 1.2 billion, but it's really not, it's 5 billion. And you know what, daddy doesn't have that money, boy. So let's just go bankrupt. So that's exactly what happened with 3AC and GBTC. Cool. So that's the story, right? This is the flashback as they say in the movie. So this is the back background story of what happened. We'll quickly go into GBTC now, but I'll take a quick pause. And I know you guys, I mean, hopefully like, are um, engaged <laughs> and see the kind of drama that unfolded in this. Hopefully you guys understand what really happened, um, you know, because there's a lot of stuff that you hear, stuff like that. But, you know, the idea of our channel is like we are data driven. We completely do a lot of analysis and we come back and give you the truth as is, but in a way that understands, you know, make you understand from a layman perspective. So hopefully you understood this. I'll take a quick pause um, and let me just quickly scroll through. Um, um, uh, um, the comments here to see if there are anything that you guys want me to answer at this point. Otherwise, we'll go to GBTC, right? Which is basically the the real thing, and you know, there's there's going to be a lot of uh, you know, value for you guys to hear what's happening there too. Um, uh, okay, uh, okay. Jose says uh, thanks for the decode. It will be another interesting year in crypto. Thanks, Jose. Yes, buddy. Can't can't uh. Can't uh, agree more. Uh, Noah, welcome, uh, welcome, buddy, and thanks for tagging me. And you know, and I know Noah really wants uh, us to do a few, um, you know, interviews and stuff like that uh, with others. So thanks for tagging me on Twitter all the time, and I appreciate your participation and appreciate you know you trying to share the channel for its success, man. I really appreciate it. Um, okay, um, what's causing the Bitcoin surge? Hey, Axel, we made a video about this last week. Just go back and check it on. You know, I think last week uh, we made a video on why, you know, this is basically right now what's happening is FOMO, but basically, you know, this is going to go down in my opinion, in my humble opinion, it's, 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 it seems more and more, smells more and more like a bear trap uh, or like a bull trap. So uh, go back and check that video out and you'll know more. Um, um, all right. Uh, it's uh, it's almost like the BBC community treated Genesis shutdown now. I don't think it was anything. I, you know, it it was mostly uh, a, a whale uh, trying to buy a lot of the Bitcoin from the market and now holding and now trying to short the longs that will result in Bitcoin to collide and go down. I don't think this happened because of Genesis is not a good news for Bitcoin. Genesis is actually bad news because there's a lot of drama that's going to unfold that's going to negatively impact GBTC. And that's precisely the reason why I'm doing this show, because I want you guys to be aware as to what's going on. This is the reality, not necessarily all the FOMO that's going on in the market right now. Um, OK, uh, let's see. OK, hello, Karina is here. All right, Frank. Welcome, buddy. Thanks for joining. Um, uh, Winko, we have a history of taking great ideas and completely screwing it up, poor chaps. <laughs> Uh, they're unlucky. I don't think they are malicious or anything. I think they're just, uh, yeah, they're, they're just unlucky. Um, uh, this whole thing seems like a Chris Nolan movie. <laughs> Tree within a dream, yeah. Financial markets undergoing are uh, generally like that. Uh, all right, White Killer. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for joining. Appreciate you being around. Uh, okay, 3 ACD GBDC chat, a lot of unpack. I believe, wow, just, uh, you know, use bankruptcy laws to move and since all it fell apart for them. Yes, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Um, you know, 5.1, you know, I was shocked to read that. It's much worse than what they anticipated. And that's why daddy coming in, you know, saving and rescuing wasn't enough. They had to go down. Um, uh, uh, okay. Uh, it's good news because the washout is over. Okay. Hang on. So Frank says, no, that's the rally to $4. We will laugh in two months. No, it's good news. Uh, because the washout is over. Uh, I don't know what you mean, Frank, but uh, but yeah, I think what you're saying is there's FOMO going on. Yeah, I agree with you. I think there's definitely FOMO going on right now. Um, 
Oh. <laughs> you just did it, don't wrong. All right, you're funny, man. Okay, uh, all right, let's get started. Uh, or, rather, or rather, let's continue on GBTC. Now, all this drama, let's kind of talk about like, how does this, how does this actually impact GBTC? And that's what we're going to talk about, right? So, okay, this is the second part, right? This is the second half uh, of the movie, and this will blow your mind hopefully as well, right? So the reason why GBTC is a ticking time bomb is because it's hidden behind all these bad trades and it's all going to unfold, right? So here's what it is. So GBTC, like we discussed, is a Bitcoin trust. It's run by DCG. As much as you say Grace and stuff like that, DCG owns it all, right? So it's basically run by DCG. It's a Bitcoin trust. It's the largest Bitcoin trust, right? Because, you know, today it has about 632,000 Bitcoin. That's how we calculated it. About $14.1 billion worth of assets underneath them. They've been trailing the last 12 months at a 48.67% discount, which is brutal, right? And I feel bad for all the investors who are stuck in this, you know, mess because you know you're losing value and then unfortunately grayscale you know uh, has been losing money for a long time so if you look at it from the early 2021 until now uh you know almost two years it's it's pretty pretty bad for any investment to be underwater and continue to go down and down and down and down in spite of having so much of bitcoin right so just so that you understand the chart what it actually means so a GBTC is at a premium when, you know, the value of their share is higher than the Bitcoin that the trust has. Now, the GBTC is under discount when the value of the share is much less than the overall holding of Bitcoin value, right? So it's about 40% down. It was close to 50% not too long. It was 40% down now, uh, which actually shows that about 40% down uh, the, the 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 GBTC share is like 40% down what it value should be based on the amount of Bitcoin that they have underneath the trust. So that's what it means, right? Just so that you see how to read the discount or premium uh, uh, net assets to value chart. The biggest problem with GBTC, right? Or maybe the best thing for them, but the worst thing for the consumer is GBTC charges an outrageous management fee of 2%. And they charge this on the assets under management value, not the share price. And I just don't know, I just don't know any other firm in the world that charges this amount of money on AUM, right? People generally, they charge this money on the share price, but they, these guys, they charge the money 2% outrageous management fee. I've never seen anything like this ever on their assets under management. So here, you know, if you look at here, they have about $14.1 billion of assets. Now, what this means is all the folks, all their customers or all their buyers of their shares, they can't go out because there is no arbitrage, right? There is no, you can't really swap to Bitcoin and take Bitcoin out. Right? You, you, it's not an ETF like that. So there is no arbitrage available. So you're stuck in this trade. And each year you pay 2%. So basically they're getting 2% of $14.1 billion, right? And as the Bitcoin value goes up, their fee also goes up, right? Because now assets under management is 14.1 billion, but as Bitcoin goes up, their fee will also go up, right? And, and this is where, as of now, with the current price of Bitcoin, they probably are making about $280 million a year on running a investment portfolio that is that, you know, where users are losing money. Can you believe this? <laughs> I can't believe it. And the reason why they're able to do it is because there is really no way to get out, right? You, I mean, you have to sell the share at a loss, almost 50% loss, or you just hang in there and wait for the Bitcoin price to move up. So at least at some point you would break even after two to three years. And hopefully then you will probably, you know, sell the stock or sell the share and move out because there's really no way you can arbitrage it. You can say, okay, just give me the value in Bitcoin. Just give me like I paid, I, I put $50,000. So just give me equivalent of $50,000 Bitcoin and I'll take it out. Right. You can't do that. There's no arbitrage available here. So now you're stuck. And that's probably the reason why they are stuck and they're going under and under and under. Uh, but with all this going on, they're still making money heads over toes, right? They're making 280 million dollars in a bear market a bitcoin price goes up to like 50 60 thousand dollars oh boy they'll make close to a billion dollars right so this is this is how the trust is created and i don't know why people went into this because it's outrageous it just benefits one 
That's GBTC. I don't think it benefits anybody else, right? And I know there is a lot of talk about like, hey, once it becomes ETF, it's going to be great and stuff like that. And we'll get there. Let's see if what probability that has like for you to become an ETF, right? Let's just talk about GBTC risks for a minute. So the first and the most important risk that I don't think a lot of people are looking at is like, not only that is the Department of Justice now looking into DC, CG because of what happened, right? With everything that has happened with, uh, you know, Genesis and Gemini and stuff like that. Department of Justice is looking into DCG as a firm, but SEC, who's always late to the party, right? They're like, you know, they are like always pe people coming in late to the drama, um, is taking action against Gemini and Genesis, right? So they turn around and sued them, right? SEC charged them of selling unregistered securities. And then there is a case in the court now. So not only DCG is attacked by DOG, DOJ now, because they are looking into this as to what's going on and why this whole thing happened, right? And what, how did you do this trade with, you know, 3AC and stuff like that? It's a house of cards. It's probably going to fall. SEC is also looking at them and then they turn around and looks like their investigation is over and they've sued them. Gemini and Genesis both. Now, Genesis is still a part of DCG, which again is a huge threat to Grayscale and hence GBTC, right? Genesis bankruptcy is revealing a big hole on their balance sheet, right? Over $5 billion. Now, this could potentially take DCG down as well, right? Because clearly they don't have the money. That's why they went ahead and they uh, had to, you know, uh, declare bankruptcy. Now, the bankruptcy court will take its course. Now, I'm not, this is less likely, but if, say, the bankruptcy court says no, you'll have to find a way to make the $5.1 billion creditors whole, and we don't care about Genesis, we want to go back to DCG and have them find a way to make people whole. And let's say, you know, unfortunately, the Bitcoin price goes down and the value of their AUM even goes down further. What do you think is going to happen? Hmm? What do you think is going to happen? They will be left with no choice but to liquidate some of their holdings, right? Now, Agreed that Grayscale has much more holdings than just the GBTC, which is a cash cow, which will they'll probably keep for last, right? They'll not slaughter it yet. They'll probably keep it for last because they're making a lot of money on that. But this would potentially result in a lot of the other portfolio altcoins getting liquidated, right? DCG has a lot of other altcoins that they've offloaded, right? And there are reports that I'm reading that, you know, they the broader venture portfolio, uh, they are planning to offload close to $3 billion in 2023. Now, I'm, I don't want to cause any panic um, or I'm not trying to, sp you know, spread any FUD out here, but these are the news that we found uh, when we were researching this, right? And it makes sense because it looks like they have about a billion dollars, looks like maybe, right, that they were planning to loan. Um, the hole is much bigger, $5 billion. They have about $3 billion of their venture portfolio. And a lot of the altcoins who've taken money for, from them um, are probably going to get offloaded. Um, a, a lot of the other trusts, they'll probably go after altcoins before they go after Bitcoin. Now, everything is connected, right? Everything is connected to each other. We all know that, right? In crypto. So alts going down and dumping further will have a ripple effect on Bitcoin and everybody else. Um, and then eventually, they, the biggest one that they have is basically Bitcoin, right? So if the hole is not covered by this, uh, they will probably come after like the Bitcoin um, and then probably, you know, they'll probably have to liquidate some of this, right? So, so that to me is like the the biggest risk here, right? Any of these events can make them liquidate and unload 632,000 Bitcoin in the open market, possibly crushing the Bitcoin and the crypto prices for a long time. Remember, this is the biggest Bitcoin storage or rather biggest Bitcoin, Bitcoin um, um available right in in any trust this is the biggest on on you know in the planet on the face of the planet and if this were to go down imagine what a 632000 bitcoin would do to the market if it was liquidated now i think the likelihood of this happening is lower but it's definitely within the realm of possibilities you know and we don't know what we will learn right the very first day we were all surprised to see that 5.1 billion dollar was the whole it wasn't 1.2 billion as they said so like you know God knows what else we're going to learn more as this whole bankruptcy thing happens, what the DOJ finds out and stuff like that, what they'll get sued with. So you never know, right? You never know. And that's the biggest risk. That's the time bomb that's waiting to get unloaded, which will kill the Bitcoin price. And as a ripple effect, will take down the entire altcoin market with it too. Now, this is again, not likely of happening, but this is in the realm of possibilities. And this is why it's a ticking, it's a ticking time bomb. Now, a lot of people would turn around and say, you know what, this is all good, but once GBTC becomes ETF, right, once they become an ETF, a Bitcoin ETF, 
this is all history, right? That nothing would happen. GPTC would be the first and the most qualified candidate to get an approval from SEC uh, to become an ETF. And once that happens, it's game over. Private Bitcoin price will never come down between below hundred thousand dollars. Now, I agree and disagree in this. I agree in the fact that Bitcoin ETF will probably be the biggest event that will happen uh, when it comes to Bitcoin price. You know, if 20, 30, 40 years from now, if you were to look back and look at the Bitcoin price chart, you will see two parts. One would be before the ETF and the other would be after the ETF. That would be a huge impact on the Bitcoin price. Bitcoin price is not going to go down below $100,000. I agree with all that. Now, what I question is, is GBTC, is GBTC the one that will get the approval? You know, I don't know. Nobody does and nobody has a crystal ball to see the future, but I doubt it. And here's why I doubt it, right? So here's why I doubt why GPTC possibly won't be becoming a Bitcoin ETF in the future, right? Firstly, getting converted to an ETF for GPTC would mean two things. First, SEC has to sign off on GPTC. So firstly, they have to submit the proposal, which they did several times and got rejected. But SEC will have to sign off on GBTC as a Bitcoin spot ETF. In the light of what is happening with uh, with Genesis and the bankruptcy and the DOJ, you know, looking into it and stuff like that, and SEC turning around and suing Genesis and Gemini of selling unsecured, you know, uh, security tokens and stuff like that, GBTC and SEC have had a very bad uh, you know, relationship, right? They've, they've even turned around and threatened to sue them and stuff like that. SEC has definitely sued uh, like DCG. And, so they have a very, very bad history. Now, will they be the ones who would get the sign off of a Bitcoin spot ETF in the light of what is happening, especially as to what else might happen in the near future and everything that has been already revealed? It makes it unlikely like they would be the one that would be get it but maybe they would be i don't know right i mean you know and but but it just seems unlikely to me uh it's just my personal feeling um and what this would entail is if gbtc were to ever get converted to an etf it would mean that gbtc will have to cut their management fee by one fourth right so if you look at any of the you know um fes etfs in the world uh you will always find that the management fee is not more than like 0.5%, right? G generally, the management fee is less than 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. That's the management fee. Now, GBDC will have to cut their management fee by one fourth and kill this cash cow that's making them hundreds of millions of dollars. That sounds like a very, very bad business decision. Why would they do that? I just don't, I just don't see them doing that. Like, why would they do that? Why would they do, why would they cut... Uh, a cash cow that's making them so much of money, they're making hundreds of millions of dollars in profit every year, even in a bear market, they're able to get like, um, you know, $280 million of revenue every year. Why would they cut that by one fourth and go really down just because they want to move this to an ETF? Like, it just doesn't make sense to me, right? It just doesn't make sense to me uh, from a business standpoint. So they are not incentivized as much as they are proposing and maybe it's a weaker proposal that gets rejected every time now i'm just speculating here guys i have no idea what they do right so i'm just speculating here but just seems very hard for me to believe that they would actually go ahead and move it into an etf and kill the cash cows kill the hundreds of millions of dollars that they are getting that's that's what i feel now the other thing that i know for sure and i think you guys will agree is there will be multiple spot etfs that will be approved right once sec goes over this you know from from bitcoin perspective they will issue multiple ETFs. Now, if it's there are multiple ETFs issued, would you go with GBTC with such colorful you know history, or would you go with something else? I don't know, right? Um, I for one would never go for an ETF, but just saying, right? Like you know that also there is going to be a lot of competition, right? For for you know for GBTC, right? To to if if they ever become an ETF, that is something to keep in mind. Um, Looking at all this, it seems highly unlikely that GDPC will ever become a spot Bitcoin ETF. Like this, this is just my personal opinion. Uh, it could happen. I hope it does because it will give some of the investors some relief because they've been stuck in a trade and just paying two percent, right? Like to GBTC because this they're literally stuck. They can't sell. They, they have to sell at a fifty percent discount if they do now. There is no arbitrage available, so they are just stuck. And these are, you know, they are, as they said, these are, you know, high net worth individuals who didn't want to go for Bitcoin and didn't want to use the hassle and stuff like that. You know, 
there there are other stocks today for example right that you can actually buy as a proxy of bitcoin like you not you don't even have to go to gbtc right a stock that comes to mind is micro strategy for example that is heavy on bitcoin right so just saying like it just seems very unlikely uh, to me that gbtc will ever become an etf uh, a spot bitcoin etf right just seems unlikely now the problem is if that event doesn't happen how will the investors recover right like what's what's in it with gbtc if that doesn't happen if they don't convert to etf if multiple etfs come in and if because of the bitcoin price hopefully going up a little bit will make this discount smaller and smaller what's the point why will anybody stick with gbtc so to, to my point the gbtc is destined to fail from this perspective because most likely investors will dump these shares in the long term, right? They, you know, the moment they recover or break even or come close, they'll just dump these, these shares, you know? Now, when a lot of the people start dumping these shares, they'll have to liquidate all the Bitcoin holding that is in the GBTC, right? Like, for example, if everybody decides not to invest in it and slowly start dumping this, what's going to happen to the underlying Bitcoin that this trust holds? At some point, they'll have to sell it all off, right? They'll have to liquidate this in, you know, in the market, uh, you know, as the value of the shares is going down. So this seems to me like a given thing, right? So it's not if GBTC will liquidate Bitcoin. I think the question is when, when they will liquidate this, right? Because I just don't see a reason why anybody would be interested in a GBTC trade, right? Just, just doesn't seem illogical to me because most likely they're not going to be an ETF. But even if they are an ETF, there are going to be multiple other options that will be an ETF. Um, they charge a 2% fee. They'll probably cut down to one-fourth or probably 1%. I don't know. They're greedy. They have a very colorful history. So I, I don't think anybody was, will, will probably just buy them. So I think people are just waiting. In my opinion, investors are waiting to reduce, like for, for like they're waiting for this bull market to come in. And once the bull market comes in, hopefully with the halving event, you know, the discount will reduce and hopefully become a premium or at least be neutral. That would be an opportunity for a lot of these people to sell their shares, uh, right? And if they dump uh, the shares beyond a certain point, the Bitcoin holding within the GBTC will start to liquidate and they'll have to kill this, this whole thing, uh, which means that a lot of this Bitcoin will get onto the market. And the moment they do, uh, Bitcoin price will come crashing down. So it's just a matter of when, um, you know, it, not if. It's just my opinion. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. And if I'm not seeing something that you guys see, do put it in the comments. Uh, we'll talk, we'll talk, we'll chat in a bit. Um, but just does it just seems like a disaster waiting to happen, and we just like you know it's a clock, right? It's a bomb that will explode, and we are just waiting for when, not if. The lesson I think here, right, for all of us as investors, and I'm really feel sorry if any of you ever invested in this, but the lesson here is like, you know, never invest in paper Bitcoin. It's always important to buy the real asset and store it in a cold wallet because that's what, you know, you have, you can control that, right? Now, unless you forget the cold wallet, you know, seed phrase, that's a different thing. But if you don't, if you're careful, you really don't need, right? Especially in products like these that are not regulated and that have a lot of stuff, right? Like you know, Bitcoin is nowhere a mature product. We are still very early. And all these derivatives and paper Bitcoin options that people have, like you should either just buy the real asset or just hold off, right? Just wait for the market to mature. You may not get the same price point, but you'll at least be rest assured that there, you'll make some money out of this, right? Investing in paper Bitcoin and, and, and stuff like this you know, it will always result in, um, you know, you not being able to control anything, right? You know, uh, if you look at their, you know, what, you know, when we were researching this, we also looked looked at their terms and services. And if you look at the terms and services, you know, they don't give equal rights to the investors, right? They don't give equal rights to the shareholders. Then if 75% of the overall shareholders come together, only then they can make a decision on what to do with the trust. If you're not 75%, then you won't be able to make any decision on the trust, whether to liquidate or not liquidate or stuff like that. And you can't get to 75% because almost 10% of these shares are held by DCG themselves. So they are about 9.5 or 9.6 or 9.1% of all the shares in Grayscale GBTC are owned by DCG. So it's basically the company that's controlling it. So it's very hard for you to get to 75% 
uh, and there are all these different groups where you can join and you know investors are venting and they're you know forming groups and they're trying to get to 75 percent of you know overall holding so they can make a decision but it's very hard to get to 75 percent because a, a big chunk about 10 percent almost 10 percent i think is controlled by dcg themselves so this is where you know you're not in control of your investments so my you know, my, you know, what I would do, uh, it's not financial advice, but just what I would do is I would never buy paper Bitcoin. I will always buy the real asset and store it in the cold wallet because I'll have complete control of when I sell it, why I sell it, how I sell it, how I swap it, what I do with it, how whether I lend it or not. Like it's all in my control. That's what I think one should do rather than trying to go for these derivative paper derivatives of, of assets like Bitcoin and other thing because we are very early in the game. Okay. That's all I had. Hopefully this was a good learning session for you to really understand what happened. If you haven't already, please hit a like uh, and help support the channel. Please subscribe to the channel. Please share this information and content with your friends. Uh, please follow us at the ARK Intel. Like I said, we uh, always, you know, ask for, uh, you know, we, we, we run out a lot of service and ask for what you need and stuff like that. You know, our job is to make high quality content, um, which uh, really makes you understand as to what's going on and helps you make decisions. Uh, so hope you liked it. You can follow us at arkintel.xyz channel. Please join our Telegram group as well, where we talk about all the stuff and uh, and also follow us, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, on um, Facebook and Instagram, right, uh, at arkintel. Okay, uh, let me take a pause and see if you guys have any questions or thoughts on this. Hopefully this was a exciting session. It was really exciting for us to investigate this and, and, and kind of bring this in front of you all. Um, uh, why? Okay, so let's see. Uh, let me. Uh, okay, let me guess. Excel says Solana is gonna get sacrificed again. Um, so, so could be because you know it, because they have so the trust that you know they have actually have they have multiple trusts right. Uh, Bitcoin is one. They do have altcoin trust and stuff like that. So yeah, it could it could impact some altcoins like Solana. Uh, could be. Uh, why is Genesis bankruptcy getting such little attention? Yeah, that's a good question, Excel. I think um, we are doing it, right? Because I think this is important for everybody to know. Um, yeah, I think, you know, there is a certain sense of uh, fatigue, I feel, in investors, right? Because they're hearing the same bad story every time and again. And it's just like, you know, just fatigued, I think. So that's probably one of the reasons I feel it's not getting uh, so much attention. But it will. It will. <laughs> Trust me. If if grayscale GBTC were to go down, oh boy, that will get everybody everybody's attention. Um, okay, uh, um, okay. Jose says uh, best guess on timing if it happens. So hard to predict. Yeah, you're right, buddy. You know it's so hard to predict. Um, yeah, I I don't know. Um, I you know I just feel that investors. Here's my personal feeling. I know again it's not necessarily going to be true. Um, but what I feel is a lot of the investors are super frustrated with GBTC and they are waiting for this discount to get smaller and smaller. Um, there is Bitcoin halfening event that's going to happen next year, right? Like the, I think we're saying like we're tracking like March or something. Uh, that will hopefully be a bull move, right? And this, this will probably get us into a bull cycle, which means that the Bitcoin will probably go up um, from a collateral standpoint. And then GBTC will hopefully flip to premium or at least get neutral and that would be a good opportunity for people to start dumping some of this right so so let's see if that happens but if, if it does then uh then yeah then it's going to be game over um but i don't know so that's roughly what i'm looking at in terms of events um that could happen okay another example for regulators to drive more oversight absolutely buddy absolutely right this is and they are going after dcg right there there's a dog investigation uh, right, they, you know, uh, SEC have already sued them and stuff like that. So they're going after them. And this is why, you know, with all the stuff that people are saying, like Bitcoin, that was the bottom, right? Like, you know, and all that, there is still so much, so much of leverage that still needs to go from this, you know, uh, from, for, you know, from crypto. I just don't see that to be the case. I don't see 16,000 to be the bottom. I do believe it's going to go down further. Now, I hope not. Like, I'm not saying that I wish for that. But as as an investor, as somebody who looks at data, I, these are the facts, right? These are the facts. As much as, you know, there's hopium across Twitter now, these are the facts. You can't argue with facts. Um, 
Okay, so you're saying 2023 or 2024 for the liquidation. Will people just wait until bull market? Hard to guess uh, how BTC and alls will go this crypto winter and when before the happening. Yeah, you're right, Jose. It's very hard to time. You're right. It's very hard to time. But I do believe that you know gbtc will get liquidated at some point i think investors are just looking to take less losses so i do believe this will probably happen this could be the event that will start another winter cycle because it's going to be catastrophic uh right when that happens uh, imagine six hundred thousand plus bit you know bitcoin liquidating in the market and having a ripple effect on all so it's going to be huge uh, but yeah it's hard to predict the timing i hope it doesn't happen as well right there are you know, there could be a way this is all it all doesn't happen i just i'm not seeing it but could be a way uh, just trying to be humble here, uh, but but yeah, it's hard to predict the timing. Um, this seems to be just the beginning of crypto winter. Uh, thanks, Excel. I don't know if this is the beginning, but I do believe we are still we are still in crypto winter very much, and what people are thinking about like, hey, Bitcoin flipped, and everything is going to go hunky dory now, and Bitcoin is going to fifty thousand dollars and all. I think all that is all that is BS. I I just don't see, you know. Again, I don't think it's BS. I just don't see that happening, but I could be wrong, right? A lot of people are wrong, so we can't predict the future. It's a very volatile market, but the data doesn't show that to be the case. Um, okay, uh, can we get a decode on what would happen to the crypto space hypothetically if Binance goes down? Okay, uh, thanks for the question. Sure, we can add this to you know our uh, our list. This will be the 39th item. So you know, please bear with us while we make such high quality content. Uh, quality takes time. So I hope you appreciate that. Um, the, the risk of Binance going down again is very slim, but you know, nothing is too big to fail, uh, just like GBTC. So yeah, we'll definitely take a look. We'll see. We'll also see what the, you know, I just don't want to give you the math behind it, but I also want to see uh, what would that entail? Like, how will that happen if it happens, right? Just like we explained how if these things happen, GBDC will go under. We'll take a similar approach on that and see what are the things to watch out for, what are the signs to watch out for for something like Binance or other big, you know, crypto, uh, you know, a company going down. So absolutely, thanks for the feedback. We'll we'll get that there. Cool. All right. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Hopefully this was helpful. So hit a like and subscribe to the channel and do follow us at the Ark Intel. Um, I do have less following there as compared to the subscriber base here. So a lot of you haven't followed there. So please go ahead and do that. It's going to be beneficial to you and you can interact with me and ask me questions and also give me feedback on what do you want to see. Thanks very much for your time. Hit a like and subscribe and uh, I will talk to you guys soon again. All right. Um, by the way, a happy Lunar New Year to all our friends over here, over China and others. Happy Chinese New Year to you all. I will see you guys soon. Um, um, okay, we have one last question from Jose. He's, you know, he's a good friend, so I'm going to take it uh, before I close. Would the liquidation stop or slow the bull market from happening? Um, so uh, would the liquidation stop or slow the bull market from happening? No. So the bull, so the bull market, so so. You know, that's a good if if the liquidations were to happen before the bull market, before the happening, uh, the bull market for the happening will come much, much later because it's going to take a while for over 600,000 Bitcoin to be absorbed in the market. So that's going to be the case uh, for sure. Right. So that you can be rest assured of uh, if this happens after the happening, this would kill the Bitcoin bull run for the next year. Uh, because generally Bitcoin goes up in peaks and then, you know, it shifts between FOMO and FUD, right? So if it's in initially, you know, when the bull market hits, it's FOMO and everybody goes in and then there is FUD then everything comes down. So if it happens immediately after, then, you know, it will probably be a very small bull market. And then this is going to go into again, uh, you know, not a winter, not a, not a prolonged winter, but at least like, you know, this will cast a shade. Just like this whole China binding, uh, banning Bitcoin mining, remember? That happened, and that you know, and Elon selling Bitcoin or stopping buying Bitcoin that killed the bull market in the last cycle. This is probably going to be that event again. It will kill the bull market and, and go from there. If it happens like much later than the bull market, so yeah, you'll see some peaks, but then Bitcoin will come down again. So that's what's going to happen. Um, okay. Uh, wow, there are more questions. Uh, uh, hang on. Uh, big red uh, vector forming to crush bull market support ban soon. <laughs> Yeah, sure, Frank. Okay, cool. I'll let you guys go. Thanks very much for this, uh, for, for joining and I'll see you guys soon. All right. Take it easy, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.